Good evening and welcome to our sixth form virtual open evening. Um, today you'll hear from some of our staff and students about life at Dover Brooks. We'll begin today's open evening with a welcome from Dover Brooks principal, Jonathan Cuff, followed by an introduction to the sixth form from our head of school, Alistair McPherson. Then we'll hear from another of our vice principals and academic director, Andrew Gillespie, who will give an overview of our academic approach, followed by our deputy head pastoral, Ellie Bartlett, who will talk about pastoral care in the sixth form. The next presentations will be from our head of boarding, Felice Diaz, about our sixth form boarding options, our director of sports and activities, Jonathan Richards, about our sport and activities options, and our head of admissions and registry about our admissions journey for the sixth form, and that's Anthony Bounds. We're also delighted to be joined by four of our upper six students this evening, Chris, Eloise, Emma, and Pedro we will be talk taking part in a student panel discussion session and sharing what it's really like to study with us. We'll then have a Q&A session with our speakers. If you have any questions during today's event, please submit these using the question box and we'll aim to cover as many of these as possible during the Q&A. Now, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Jonathan to open tonight's event. Over to you, Jonathan. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual open evening for the sixth form here at Doverbrooks. I do hope you enjoy learning a little bit about our fabulous school and that this encourages you to come along and see us in person. Our sixth form has grown steadily over the years and is now the largest independent school uh, sixth form in Oxford, delivering 34 A-levels to small class sizes in a forward-thinking, socially informal, but academically rigorous environment. Our students and parents have always spoken highly of us and continue to do so and this is driven by not only the levels of academic outcomes, but also the environment and how that environment brings out the best in our students. These academic results are crafted over the two years by developing a genuine love of learning and are sharing their academic journey with our brilliant staff who are passionate about their subjects. It's often been commented that Doverbrooks is one of the only schools where the importance of laughter appears on our aims and ethos. And it's certainly something that we see every day. Our view is that a happy and engaged student are successful and the combination here of excellent teaching, student happiness and high engagement is fundamentally the reason why Dover Brooks has been ranked inside the top 1% nationally with value added for students at A level. We are of course more than just results and I hope that tonight not only gives you a flavour about what's academically available but also a broader understanding of the school and its genuine unique ethos. I really hope you have an interesting hour or so and look forward to meeting you in person when you visit our fabulous school. Thank you, Sophie, and have a great evening. Hello, everybody. A hugely Scottish warm welcome from me, and thank you, as Jonathan says, for coming to our uh, virtual event this evening. What I'm going to try and do is to give you a flavour, though Jonathan's already begun the process, of just what sick form like life is like at Doverbrooks. And Jonathan summed it up really rather well by saying it's a place of academic challenge and social informality, a place of independence and individuality, but also a place where students have ambition and learn to gain the strengths that they will need when they go on to the next phase of their life. That's our building. There it is, a shining light in North Oxford. There's me down in the bottom, a light shining into the darkness. That's me down in the bottom corner there. If you can look very closely, I'll start to wave to you. The bottom two right-hand windows, that's me. And we are in ba on the Banbury Road, for those who know Oxford, very near Summertown, and really rather palatial, celestial surroundings. The sixth form has, it says there, 390 students, but we never stand still. That number has actually gone up in the course of the last day to 392. So as Jonathan says, the biggest independent sick form in Oxfordshire. And there are over 130 new students each year join us from the UK and all over the world. That's really quite exciting because it means that when people join us, and most people do join us fresh in the sick form, then they will come with new ideas, new backgrounds, new experiences, and they will experience new teaching. We won't uh, have a good knowledge of what they were like when they were 14 and get their first rabbit and hear some photos. 
It's a totally new experience, and that I think is quite exciting and aids, uh, as I'll say later, the transition from school to university. There are some students there in front of you. We hired them from a modeling agency. No idea who they are, but I thought they looked good. You can see lovely views as well. It's a day and boarding school, including weekly boarding. So lots of people come from a variety of different backgrounds, many of them local. There are some of the schools our students joined us from last year. You can see there an eclectic list of schools, both local and international. And the more the mix, the, the greater the mix, the, the better it is. We feel it's very important to escape any sense of a small middle class English background. We want as many different experiences brewing as we possibly can. So why do students join us for the sixth form? We have a humongous list of subjects. Almost all subjects are here. There's very few that we don't do. We don't do design and technology. We don't do dance, which is a big blow to me because I used to be the head of dance. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. And we don't do, uh, I can't even think of anything else. We don't do IT, but we do do computing. And we do it in small classes. So a range of subjects, small classes, never more than 11 in a class. And we think that's very important. The small classes definitely add to the sense of community that's so central to what we do. But community, fostering a sense of community, but with deep care and commitment to each and every individual. I'd like to think, but you'll find out more from the students, about the, the quality of teaching is very high, though given that two of the students study my subject and are taught by me, they may well disagree when it comes to English literature. The ethos and environment, well, I think we've said it before, but socially informal, academically intense, fostering the individual. There's no template for the typical Doverbrooks student. No such thing exists. We want people to come as individuals. We want to leave, the, leave here as individuals, but maybe with a greater sense of maturity, readiness for the next stage of their life. And yes, of course, bits of paper as well, because that's so important, especially nowadays. There we are, more, more students from the modeling agency. The, one of the big things, I actually interviewed somebody today who, came, who is coming. She's coming very, very soon. Her big sister came and I said, well, we've always got this cliche of the successful transition from school to university. But the mum said, it's not a cliche or it's only a cliche because it's true. That's what definitely happened to the big sister. And she's gone off now to Exeter and she just feels more ready for university because of the maturing development that she felt that she had while she was at Doverbrooks. As our numbers grow, so our facilities have to keep up with that. And we're really proud of the fact that we've just opened in the middle of Summertown a fan, dabby, dozy art centre. It was open formally last week. Students have been in there. It's been built and prepared incredibly quickly. And it really is very swanky indeed. Gold taps, jacuzzis, no, none of those things. But everything that could you could possibly want to foster creativity and to develop the artistic talents of our already very artistically successful um, students. We're very proud of the Arts Centre and we're also proud of the new study spaces that the development of the Arts Centre has allowed us to liberate. There are some very serious looking students, uh, but really it's very, it's very nice, the new study spaces. Lots of study spaces, even although our numbers continue to grow, because what has allowed us to grow so rapidly and with such success, as Jonathan said, about the top 1% of schools in the country for value added, we can't lose those central tenets, which is care for the individual, developing a sense of community and greater global awareness so that people know and value each other and their place in the world. 
Now let me hand you over to my fellow vice principal. We've got 150 vice principals, it seems, to my fellow vice principal, Andrew Gillespie, who'll talk you through the academic aspect of life in the sixth form. Andrew. Thank you very much, Alistair. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to focus on the academic approach and the, the elements of our approach that underpin what we do. And I would describe them as collaborative. That means that we encourage uh, students to work together in lessons. They'll be working on projects. They'll be solving problems. They'll be doing peer review. So that they learn from each other as well as from us. And it's collaborative in the sense that the teachers and students are working together, this kind of sense of shared goals. The, the environment, the ethos you've heard about means that there is this sense that we can talk openly about work, we can have a constructive discussion, we can have a dialogue uh, that enables everyone to progress well. It's based on the individual, so from the first um, discussion we have with, with a, a student, when we first meet a student, we're trying to work out what it is they might want to do later what their strengths are, what their interests are, so that we can then help them and guide them and put together a programme for them that uh, um, builds on their interests and will get them to where they want to get to uh, at the end. It's about opportunity. It's about making sure students have the chance to get involved in areas they want to get involved in, to shine in areas where they want to shine and can shine, and to give them the chance to do well, whether it be uh, in, in, the, in their lessons, whether it be in performances, in projects, in sport and so on, but to make sure that there's plenty of opportunities for everybody. Fourth one there is about encouraging people to think. Um, as, as Alistair said, really, we want people to be individuals. We want them to think for themselves, to think critically, to challenge, to question, to be curious. Uh, we're not trying to teach people what to think, but how to think for themselves. And that is part of that preparation for now and beyond. Last one there's about achievement. It's enabling achievement, celebrating achievement. We, we, we enjoy people doing well. And as I say, that can, that can be in their exams, it can be in performances, it can be in a particular essay, it can be in presenting at an assembly in all different ways. But uh, we want people to enjoy this process and feel that they have gained enormously from it. So that's about uh, um, what the approach is. We'll now just look at the, the um, some of the subjects because when we talk about the individual what we're trying to do is make sure people are studying things they want to study so there's a very long list of subjects um, and, and you'll find there you know combinations or options which you probably wouldn't find in most schools you can do sociology and psychology you could do rep or, or philosophy business and economics very few schools would give you kind of that range of subjects and and very importantly there are no option blocks so you'll sometimes see a, a, a list of subjects at a school but when you get down to the nitty-gritty there are quite restrictive uh, elements there to what you can choose here you really can put together the combination that's right for you what we do is we advise we guide based on what you're, you're going on to do next to make sure it's an appropriate mix um, but you know clearly if you're a student and you're studying something that you love and that you're interested in and that you've chosen for yourself uh, you're going to put your heart and soul into it and, and study becomes a great and productive thing so that, that's part of focusing on the individual. We also want students to be able to, to go beyond A-level, the A-levels at the core, but we want students to have the opportunity to develop further academically in terms of academic skills and curiosity and confidence and so on. So we, we've got a whole range of academic options, enrichment options. The EPQ um, is incredibly popular. We, we uh, Students volunteer to do it, but they do that in very large numbers. Uh, and that's, as you probably know, is a piece of independent research it can be an artifact, it's more commonly a kind of written piece of work, but students are pursuing their own passions. And that can go everything from kind of quantum physics to, to K-pop to, we had a lovely one last year, which was the title was, if Shakespeare is translated, is it still Shakespeare? I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so students find something that's of interest to them. It's often of interest uh, in or related to what they're gonna study at university or their career. Um, and, and when you hear those presentations, and you hear the reflection by students on what they've learned, um, it's, it's one of those wow moments in, in a school uh, in terms of what students really are achieving. So that's EPQ. Um, and then we have the Think programme, um, where we are creating time and space in the timetable and the curriculum for students to develop uh, further academic interests. These are wide ranging. If, if, you're, if you're going on to do law and you need LNAP preparation or, or medicine, you need BMAT, we will do specialist preparation there. We will, uh, study in the PLUS programme, you can study beyond the A level and start looking at what university is like. So you'll, you'll see there, there's a combination of things. And, and what we're trying to do is, is give you, match you to, to the number of things that, that suit you or the range of things that suit you. So you don't have to do them all, you don't have to do any of them, but it makes sure that everybody's engaged and, and is choosing. The, the right program. 
the bottom bit of that diagram is just about you know almost everyday life uh, in the sixth form looking for opportunities to present at conferences to enter competitions um, so students again can, can, can show what they can do last year we had uh, one of our, our economics teams won a national competition we had a, a university of cambridge essay writing winner we had fantastic debating success etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's create an environment where people can do things where we can nurture that they can pursue their existing interests they can develop new academic interests so a wide range of options there it leads to um success in absolute terms so some fantastic results by students in terms of a stars and a um again as alistair says you know that's important these days that that, that enables you um to choose the university and course that you want it looks fantastic on a CV for the rest of your life, but importantly, um, A levels or fantastic A level grades get you access to the next stage. But the important thing is, what can you do when you get there? Somebody once said that the, the A level grades open the door, but what happens when you walk through it? So, part of what we're trying to do with our approach is make sure you walk through equipped for the next stage and, and university for example um, it, it's not a difficult process adapting to the academic style or academic level so in terms of um, results we, we, we talked about the absolute but we're also very interested in the progress that students make with us value adding is, is measuring essentially how students have performed at a level compared to where they started uh, what's the progress they've made and as you've heard today students with us will, will make outstanding progress compared to schools across the country and, and within oxfordshire so it, this is a real um, testament to the work they do to the environment to the teaching i hope um, to the fact they're studying something they enjoy uh, they go on to incredible academic achievement they also go on in terms of um, universities let's look at where they go on to the destinations. The majority of our students are going to UK universities. That's a list in, in order. We had um, this year, I think 15 going to UCL, about 11 to King's. So it's it's an order from UCL and King's. Um, London, you'll see it's very, very popular destination, Oxford, Cambridge, Bristol, Exeter, except some superb universities. Um, and an incredibly wide range of subjects. So it's like top degrees, we've got economics, we've got psychology, we've got medics, engineers but also graphic designers. It, it's a fantastic range of routes later on. Um, and it's not just universities. We've got students going on to foundation courses, music schools, drama schools. We've got some students go to the States. We support that. We've got a few this year going to Europe. We've got one going to Switzerland um, and others going into um, go straight to work. One of, one of my students uh, last year, uh, Anushka, has gone into Grant Thornton, a very rigorous selection process. She's now a management trainee already, just started, um, and we'll get qualifications through that. So working with the individual to find the best route for them. I'll now hand you over to Ellie. I think what I'm, the aim of our academic approach is to enable students to leave us happy, successful, and prepared for the next stage, and past all feed into that as well. Over to you. Thank you very much, Andrew, and welcome to all of you to Doverbrooks. I just thought I would run through some key features of our pastoral programme here at Doverbrooks and those things that we do to really support the students inside and outside of the classroom. So I'm Ellie, I'm the Deputy Head Pastoral here, and I work with an outstanding pastoral team to make sure that those needs for our students are met every step of the way. So some Key tenants you've already heard about this evening, laughter, individuality, community, and that's very much at the heart of our pastoral system as well. Uniquely, students don't have a traditional form group whilst they're here. They have and are appointed a director of studies. Often, this is somebody that will teach them, although not always, and this enables us to give them a real Dover Brooks experience, working with them very much a three way process with the student at the focus of that. The director of studies will meet with that student individually every week and they will work with them in all aspects of their life here. So whether or not that's academic feedback and personal well-being, they can also help with university applications, with involvement in our activities programme, which you'll hear more about from Jonathan in future and we'll also base on reflection in the personal development programme. So our personal development programme really features on community aspects of that and enables students to develop and put their best foot forward when they leave us, whether or not that's through PSHE programmes or external speakers, all of that is covered within the PD timetable. It also enables students to meet together with a small group 
so that they can discuss key issues and meet some friends as well. I know it can be particularly daunting when students start at a new school and so that opportunity for making friends is really key. We have huge support networks both in terms of the staff but also in terms of opportunities through activities, through socialising in the common areas, even lunchtime and again those PD opportunities as well. It's such an easy place to make friends and everybody is so welcoming. We'll have an induction process as well so that students get to meet other students in their DOS group, their director of studies group, um, to make the most out of their opportunities here. Ultimately, as Andrew said, what we want students to do is to leave as confident, well-rounded and open-minded individuals. We have a support programme here to help, whether that's myself as a deputy head pastoral, I have an assistant head pastoral and we also have a pastoral mentor as well as boarding house staff and some school counsellors as well. But ultimately, our jobs here are to make sure that your sons and daughters have as positive an experience as possible. So that's all from me and I'm going to pass on over to Felisa Diaz, who is our head of boarding, but I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, hello, my name is Felisa and I'll just tell you a bit about boarding at Dover Brooks. So as I think Alistair mentioned, half of our sixth form are boarders, so that is a really significant part of our community. Um, as you can see on screen, um, we've got three boarding houses for our new lower six. I won't go into too much detail about the houses and the differences. You can see lots of information and lots of pictures um, on our website, so do go and take a look. As Ellie has covered, our boarding team are a really important part of the pastoral care that we offer the sixth form students. The houses are all staffed 24 hours a day and they each have two or three uh, residential team members who, who live with the students. For many students, we know that this is their first time away from home. And so it's really important for us that they feel welcome, they feel at home, and they can relax as well as study productively. Oxford is a really great place to study. Um, there's lots to do here. There's a really large student community. Um, and there's lots of things that students can do and explore their interests, whether it's at school or in the city centre. And we want our boarding houses to be a really good sort of landing pad for students for them to then reach out and, and, and find and develop in whichever way, you know, develop their interests um, properly. Um, the houses all have good facilities. So there's communal space, students can relax. There's a TV, uh, access to Netflix, games, um, and outside area where we have ping pong um, and outdoor games. So on that note, I'm going to pass over to Johnny now, who will tell you a bit more about the activities at Dover Brooks. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, my name is Jonathan Richards. I'm the Director of Sports and Activities. I'm going to try and give you a little bit of a flavour of the sixth form programme and some of the opportunities that are open to our students here. Um, I would say the sports and activities ethos very much mirrors um, a lot of what you've heard earlier. Um, and I use three words to describe it, and those are choice, engagement, and enjoyment. So in terms of choice, um, we have a very broad ranging programme, similar to our, our A-level subjects, with an excess of 50 clubs, weekly clubs taking place throughout the year. Students aren't forced to do any particular one club or even choose from, from a narrow bracket. They have the freedom to choose and explore their own interests. What we find is this gives or gets more engagement and better outcomes from the students. Uh, we also match our programme to the specialists of our staff, but also the interests and demands of our students. The programme's always evolving and it's, it's never been the same in any two consecutive years. For me, most importantly, it's about enjoyment. OK, we want the students to have fun. Um, I've heard this place many times described as a place of laughter and energy, and that's what we see in our activities programme. Uh, Alistair alluded earlier to it um, being a, a rich melting pot of young people from many, many backgrounds. And the sports and activities programme is a great vehicle for allowing them to quickly make friends um, and to develop shared interests. In terms of facilities um, and specifically sports facilities, many of you will know we have a very um, good central location in Oxford, so we have superb access to um, high quality sports facilities in the local area and also some just a sport, uh, a short bus 
Oceania Way. For example, Oxford University Sports Centre is one of our, our main providers. Most of these uh, clubs, societies, performing arts, sports uh, take place throughout the week in timetabled uh, blocks so on a Tuesday afternoon and a Thursday morning when there's no lessons. In addition, though, we have lots and lots of other things uh, that take place throughout the year, concerts and musicals. We have many fixtures, tournaments, competitions. We have a very, very bespoke tennis academy for high-performing tennis players who want to come to Dover Brooks to A levels. We offer the Gold Duke of Edinburgh Award um, and trips and tours take place throughout the year, for example, our annual ski trip and much more besides. So I hope that gives you a little flavour of what we have to offer and I look forward to answering any of your questions throughout the evening. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Johnny. Hi, everybody. I'm Anthony Bounds. I'm head of admissions here at Dover Brooks. Um, you've heard how great the school is from our teachers. Um, in a few moments, you're going to hear how great the school is from our students. And we promise they're unscripted, they're unprompted. Um, but I'm going to take a few minutes of your time just to talk you through the admissions process and how straightforward and easy it is to join our school uh, next September. So um, we like all our applicants to attend an open event, whether it's a virtual one like this, but we really hope to see you on the 9th of October, which is our first in-person open event for quite a while for obvious reasons. Um, that's a really good way of getting to get a sense of the school, of meeting all the teachers who teach lots and lots of our subjects, meeting lots more students, and just getting a real sense of what it's like to be at Dover Brooks, particularly at the sixth form, and really get a sense of what it's like to be feeling the bricks and mortar and the atmosphere that we have, which is, like we've been saying, really full of love and laughter for everybody. Um, after that, what you can do is complete the application form, um, really straightforward on our website. And then what we do is we'll bring you in for an interview where you can meet Alastair, probably meet me and my other colleagues, Rebecca, who does the admissions with me. Um, and you get to talk about your hopes for the future, your A-level subjects and what it's like to be at Dover Brooks from your context and, and talk to us about what your hopes are for the future. After you have the interview, um, we'll write out to your school for a reference as well as asking you, asking you to provide um, school reports that give us an idea of your predicted grades and your academic ability. And after all that, what we'll do is we'll make you an offer to come and join us. Um, the entry requirements for the school are six sixes at GCSE, is what we like to have. Um, ideally, you'll have sevens in the A-level subjects that you want to take, and you must have a seven in maths if you want to take maths or an eight if you want to do further maths. Um, but really the most important thing from this is to just take away is that get in touch with us on the email address at the bottom of the slide, and we're happy to talk you through what the options are moving forwards. Um, assuming you are interested in joining us, which I know you are, um, we've got a whole range of scholarships and bursaries that you can find on our website, so I won't talk about them in great detail. Um, what I will say is that we uh, really encourage students to think really carefully about the scholarships they might be applying for. They're hugely competitive, um, and we're really looking for students who are outstanding in those fields that they're, they're going for. So what I would say to you is if you want to go for a scholarship, please drop me a line um, on the email address you can see on the slide, and I'm happy to talk you through what the process is like, what we're looking for, and just see whether you're going to kind of fit the bill. Um, if you might need some financial assistance to join us at the school, um, we do offer a range of bursaries that you can, again, find some information about on our website. Um, it's really important there that you do get in touch with me to have that initial conversation so we can start the process as early as possible before you join us. Um, what I'd say is so some key dates for you to remember in terms of scholarships. Um, the applications need to be with us by the 27th of October and the scholarship assessments will be taking part, uh, will be taking um, being held between the 22nd and the 26th of November, a day during that week for, for some of the different scholarships. So again, those dates will be fixed slightly closer to time, but if you are interested in the scholarships, please just come and uh, make sure you have those notes in your diary. So that's enough from me, um, and I'm now going to pass you on to um, our students. Thank you, Anthony. We're now going to hear from some of our current upper six students about what life is really like at Dover Brooks. Um, so without further ado, if our students would now like to turn their web cameras on and their microphones on, I'll hand back over to Andrew, who will be facilitating the discussion. So over to you, Andrew. Thank you very much. OK, so this is the bit you really want to hear, which is the student's voice. And I'm telling you what it's like. Um, so um, thank you for coming along, everybody. I'm going to ask you the opening question. Perhaps you could just introduce yourselves and, and just talk about where you came from in terms of which schools you came from or what, and um, what you're studying at the moment. Eloise, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Eloise. Um, I came from Headington School before um, and I do English, drama and film studies. Okay, Chris. 
Hi, so I'm Chris. I came from Bradford, which is near Reading, and I study uh, sociology, psychology and history. And my fourth subject, which I dropped, was economics. Fantastic. Emma? Hi, I'm Emma. Um, I used to live in Dubai. I came from a school called Dubai College and I do English, sociology and biology, but I dropped history at the end of last year. Fantastic. And Pedro, you might see Pedro on a photo earlier on in the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm Pedro. Uh, I came from the international uh, school from Dover Brooks before the sixth form, but before that I came, I was living in Brazil and I'm doing chemistry, physics, maths, and I dropped further maths recently. Fantastic. So wide range of subjects, which we were talking about earlier, um, and we'll talk a bit later about kind of destinations, what you hope to go on to do. But perhaps if we just kind of explore a bit um, what, why you changed. So what is it that made you change for sixth form and come to Dover Brooks? And let's go through the same order again, if you kick off, Eloise. Sorry, yeah. So I came from Headington um, and I think there are lots of things that made me switch to Doberbrooks, but I think the um, small classes was definitely um, one. And I think just the atmosphere when you walk in, every, everyone's so friendly. Um, and I think the mutual respect between the teachers and the students I found was one of the, one of the main things. Um, I think the teachers, unlike other private schools like Headington, the teachers, um, the teachers there were very sort of you felt inferior. Um, whereas at to at Doberbrooks, you definitely have um, respect both ways and um, feel more equal. Okay, so about the environment and the ethos. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I would directly echo what Eloisa said. Um, all those things are completely one of the reasons why I also changed. And for me, another big reason was just the change in learning. So at Dave Brooks, there are very few, there's like, in comparison to other schools, very few rules. And my old school is very traditional. And in that sense, you do kind of get away from this traditional atmosphere that surrounds school. And the process of learning then becomes very different because of that. And I guess that for me really made a difference. And I think that's one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to come to Dover Brooks. But what does that mean when you say the process of learning is different? I mean, what, what have you found in the sixth form? How would you describe it to somebody? So I'd describe it as more, it's more self-led and it's also more, as I was just saying, you have more of a relationship with your teachers. So the lessons are more interactive. It's less so you have traditional teacher standing at the board uh, with a PowerPoint and you're making notes on your, on your paper. It's more, Learning's in the discussion, you're always talking, you're learning through other people, you talk, you're encouraged to talk with other people, you learn with others, and that difference really made a difference to me. Good. Okay, okay. So it's, it's interactive, this discussion in the lesson. What, one of our teachers talked today about how great it is to be back in the classroom and wandering around and talking and, and kind of discussing the work that's going on. Um, you, you, you mentioned, though, about the others could ask you, you talked about kind of less rules, which, which might suggest that, that, you know, I don't know, you're, you're running wild or running free. I mean, how, how does that work? Maybe you kick off, Chris, and we'll ask the others. What does that mean if there's less rules? I mean, I think. Uh, oh, Pedro, you can go. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, less rules, I'd say that it's not less rules, but it's more kind of informal. It's more of an informal and friendly environment. Like some other schools in the UK, as I heard from other people, you had to like call Mr. or Mrs. Mrs. And then surname is more in here. You call the teachers by their first name or you don't need to wear like a uniform. You wear whatever you want in like certain like with certain restrictions obviously but um, yeah, there's these kinds of rules that makes the school more relaxed and i think it's better to learn yeah i mean what we'd hope you know is that, that, that it, it's informal but serious underneath in terms of what we do so we're serious about learning but the environment is one which encourages discussion and dialogue emma you're about to say something i think you, you, you said it was a bit more like your, your previous school is that how would you describe those yeah i mean it's more similar to my previous school than I think either Weezy's or Chris's was because um, mine was obviously an international school in Dubai but I think the difference is that there are less rules and I think it's the same with Chris like I really like the learning process but I think the no rules thing isn't no rules because because of the mutual respect you have with your teachers because you genuinely like them 
and they genuinely care about you you kind of you have a relationship with them so you're not going to try like sort of go wild to like annoy them what you might have done if you were in a straight to school and I think that's how it has been for me at least yeah, good. And again, our, our aim is that you, you, you're self-motivated, you're self-driven, you're self-directed, ready for university. We provide a structure in which that happens, and, and you know the results that people achieve is, is because they're they're actually very kind of self-disciplined. But okay, let, let's pick up another thing, which is to do, you know it's, it's a big change. Changing schools for sixth form is, is is a big change. One of the things we know that people worry about is is losing their previous friends and how easy is it to make friends at the the new school. Um, Emma, let's pick up with you again. What was it like for you starting? How easy was it? I think, I mean, I had quite a different experience because I moved an entire continent away. So no sort of background friends to like prop me up even outside of school. Um, but I think actually it's so much easier than you think because everyone's sort of in a similar situation because so many people are new, even if they know lots of other people, everyone's still going to be really inclusive and sort of like because it's so individual you don't feel like I mean I think the one thing I missed was form classes because that's just like a group of people you have to get to know no matter what but I actually and I but at the same time it wasn't as bad as it could have been like I think Covid didn't help but yeah. within like a month you suddenly have like new best friends and you're like oh it's all fine okay okay Chris Easy yeah, I'd say coming from. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, was it easy to make friends or not? I mean, what, what's what's the environment like coming into it? It's very easy. I'm. It's an atmosphere in which everybody is encouraged to know everyone, as well as everyone wants to know everyone, and that difference there about everybody and the pupils actively wanting to know other people is what makes a real difference. It's not like tradition, like kind of other schools where people are split off in their groups and everyone's all settling down into those because there are so many new people joining and everyone doesn't know anyone people actively want to get to know others and i think that that really does have an impact on how you make friendships and who you make friendships with because people are going to be everywhere and you're going to see so many people that you are bound to just interact with so many and as emma said you will within a month suddenly realize you'll have these people that you'll constantly be around and just it's a changing experience Good. Yeah. I mean, and, and as you say, I mean, I think, I think people you know, find it fairly easy to mix. We don't have a house system in the sixth form. It's not that you kind of belong to different groups. It's, it's everybody's kind of in it together. Um, you, I, I think, Emma, you were talking about form groups, not having form groups. And, and we obviously have the director of study system. Pedro, you were at our international school. You came to sixth form. So you, we do have form groups lower down. But in the sixth form, we've got this, this director of study system. Do you, do you want to describe that, your, your view of that? Uh, for me, the director of study is a teacher that you might or might not be taught by. Um, it's you usually it's you're usually taught by your teacher, your adults, but your adults I would describe as a gate between you, the student, and everyone else in school, like your teachers, head of departments, anyone. So if you have a problem with some someone, you tell your adults, he will like sort it out, not sort it out, but he will help you with the problem. Or even if you're running late to lessons, you tell him, okay, I'll be one minute late. And instead of like just showing up late. Uh, he also helps you with like academic and mental uh, psych uh, psychological problems. So he's like a person that's there for you all the time. Great, yeah, okay. So then they've got this kind of 360 degree. Do you, Eloise, do you, want, do you want to talk about director studies? Um, yeah, I think what Pedro was saying they are obviously here to help you academically and if you're struggling with that but um also with your personal well-being they uh, my dos is joe and he's been so helpful with that and they always make you feel like they're there um you know you can talk to them whenever you want um you can just message them on teams um you know arrange meetings they already you have uh, weekly catch-ups with them anyway um just to talk about how you're doing academically but also in general um and they're really really helpful um and i would definitely say sort of use them wisely as well 
Okay, brilliant. And the, we try and match a student to a director of study. So, you know, if, if your career is maybe drama, we're trying to match you with somebody who's got an interest in that and experience in that. And often it's one of your teachers as well. So they, they get a full view. They're the link with the parents and the boarding and everything and bring everything together. Um, okay, just got a couple more questions. You, you, you talked to all of you about kind of doing four subjects in year one. That's fairly unusual for schools. Most schools start with three. So we do four and, and usually drop to three. Was it worth doing four in the first year? What, what was your view of that? Somebody wants to talk. Emma, um, yeah. Emma, go on. Yeah, I'm going to name you then. Emma, do, what's, what was the value of doing four? I mean, I think for me personally, I really, really enjoyed history, like the entire, like as for as long as I've been in school. So it was more, I knew I was going to drop it because it's such a like heavy load of work um, in terms of essays. But I think actually I just got, what I got out of it was that you learn more. So I don't, I, I enjoy learning. So it's different, I guess, if it was maths or something, but with history because I liked it so much it was kind of like I wanted to go to lessons just to sort of like enrich myself I guess so it just adds another dimension because you know you're not necessarily doing it for a grade but just that's how I chose to view it. Okay so I was giving you breath and anyone and Louise? What? Um, yeah so I did philosophy for a year um, and I think definitely the same with Emma um, but also it's just nice to start with four so that you have you can explore different interests um, and see what you like. Um, and it was nice, it's just, I think it's better to sort of start with more um, than to start with less. And so, you know, you can drop down if you want and most people do do that. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was really nice to still, even though I dropped it, it was really nice to do it for a year because I've learned so much, even though I won't get an A level, a -level out of it. Yeah, so it gives you breadth and explore. Okay, um, we talked about EPQs. I think you might mostly doing EPQs. Chris, just a quick insight into your EPQ. Okay, so my EPQ is how could behavioural economics have been better leveraged during the UK's first COVID-19 lockdown? Um, so originally I took economics as well, and I did that as my fourth subject. And I combined my love for economics, sociology and psychology into my EPQ. And it is a really good idea to take on the EPQ. It does teach you different skills which you don't get in the traditional A-level courses. And that does, it does really widen you and make you think differently to how you would traditionally just writing that 20 marker for history. But other than that, I think it does explore and forces you to kind of think differently and think in depth, in a real depth, and it's you're self-motivated. So you can go into how much depth you want and you can do it on whatever you want to do it on. And so that real self-engagement in it, I found quite enjoyable. Yeah, and as I say, listening to and, and reading the, the, the out, final outcomes is, is, is fantastic. Okay, let's just think about kind of next steps and next destinations. There's, there's quite, quite a variety between you. So let's kick off with you, Pedro. What, what's, what's the future bring? Uh, I want to go to uni when I finish my A-levels. Um, I want to do chemical engineering because of my passion for sciences and maths. And I think I want to finish my finish uni here in the UK and then probably go back to Brazil, I'd say. Brilliant. And, and the director of studies is part of that, helping you with the process of applications yeah. and so on. They help yeah. you with your personal statement. They help you with like your UCAS form and yeah. Emma? Thanks, Frederick. Sorry. Emma, yeah? Um, well, because I'm having a gap year and I'm not applying this year because I'm just not entirely sure what I want to do. But I mean, I think it will either be politics or maybe English related because that's kind of where my interests lie. Um, so, yeah, I think gap year wise, it's going to be a bit of traveling and then volunteering, maybe with the Labour Party, maybe with some charities, just, you know, trying to figure out <laughs> where I stand with things. But again, yeah. My DOS has been really helpful with that. And when I, if I come back next year to apply to uni, I'll have the same DOS I had for the last yeah. two years to help me with that. So, That's it. yeah, and it, it, it's interesting. I think, Eloise, are you just, you're going to gap year as well, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to take a gap year. I, so, I mean, we always get some students to a gap year. It'll be interesting to see, I think, given the circumstances for the last two years, where we've got more people doing that and just getting a bit of time out to do, do other things. Uh, um, not, not to forget you, Chris, what's your plans? Um, I'm not going to take a gap year. I'm going to head straight on to uni uh, study social sciences at university. That's kind of the aim and then 
who knows where that will take me from then on. But that's the next step I've got planned with at the moment. We'll, we'll watch your success with, with pleasure. Right. OK, last question then. So uh, obviously people are kind of watching this thinking, should I apply, should I not apply? So just describe Doverbrook with a sixth form to them. I'm going to go left to right on my screen. Eloise, just tell them, tell them what a sixth form is in three words or something. Oh, gosh. Um, um, just friendly and great atmosphere is the thing for me. Brilliant. Thank you. Chris? Enjoyable and hard work. That sounds good. Enjoyable, hard work. Put them all together. And Emma? Um, I think, yeah, friends and I guess like enriching yourself through that. Good. Okay. That's not that's not a bad thing. And then Pedro? I would also use hard work, but with relaxed. Good. Thank you, team. Thanks for thanks for answering those questions. I'm gonna hand over or back to Sophie now, I think. Thank you. thank you, Andrew, and thank you to all our students as well. Um, we're now going to head on to the Q&A session part of today. Um, so thank you to everyone that's been submitting their questions so far. Joining our panel today, we have Doe Brooks Principal, Jonathan Cuff, Head of Sixth Form, Alistair McPherson, Vice Principal and Academic Director, Andrew Gillespie, who you just heard from, Deputy Head Pastoral, Ellie Bartlett, Head of Boarding, Felisa Diaz, Director of Sport and Activities, Jonathan Richards, and Head of Admissions and Registry, Anthony Bounds. And of course, we also have our lovely upper six students, Chris, Emma, Eloise, and Pedro on hand two, who you've just heard from, um, should you have any questions for our students specifically. As I've said already, thank you to those that have submitted all your lovely questions so far. If you do have any further questions during the Q&A, please submit these to the question box, and we'll cover as many of these as possible now. So our first question tonight is, what sets Doverbrooks apart from other schools? Uh, oh, like let me lead off that one and, and, and do that one for everybody. Um, I think in terms of what set it apart from boarding schools, for me, that's that's it's quite an interesting, interesting question. I mean, I, I, I've got a long history of knowing boarding schools, and I think you know, in terms of the boarding ethos, I think a lot of students tend to relate to their their boarding house staff and the relationships that they have with them, and they tend to be different from their teaching staff. Um, the teaching the, the the teaching relationship tends to be more formal. Um, whereas the boarding relationship tends to be more personal, more collaborative, and, and it's more of a journey. And I think what sets Doverbrooks apart in, in, in terms of a comparison to, the, to those other schools is that all the relationships at Doverbrooks are like the boarding relationships at other schools. And I think um, that's a very special thing, the fact that you could have that relationship um, of collaboration, care, and warmth and kindness, and genuine interest in yourself or your physics teacher or your chemistry teacher or your history teacher. And it's not just your housemaster. Uh, and I think ultimately that's what's brilliant about the school. Uh, and that's what really sets us apart from, from other institutions like ours. Can I join in? What, what, what's interesting, I mean, the school as a whole is around 700 students, but it's it's got different sections, different parts to it on different locations. So one of the interesting things compared to most schools is it, it is a thick form in its own world, but part of a bigger school. So for things like music and drama, we can collaborate across the years, but the sixth formers are in a sixth form world rather than a kind of centre within a bigger school. And I think that just creates a different environment, particularly when you've got so many people joining us for sixth form. So it, it's got a very dynamic feel that is that transition before university, I think, which is why I think a lot of students come to us. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, our next question tonight is, what is the split of boarders versus day pupils at the sixth form? So I'll take that one, um, really straightforward. Um, it's about 50-50 uh, between day and boarding. Most of our numbers are 50-50, so between UK and international it's 50-50, and boarders it's 50-50, boys and girls it's 50-50. It's not deliberate, it just happens that way. Um, and like um, Andrew's been saying, because we have so many new people joining us um, at the start of the year, we, we really can kind of shake things up and make sure they've got a really good mixture of students uh, when people start with us. Brilliant, thank you, Anthony. Um, sticking with a similar theme, we have another question here, which is what percentage of sixth form are overseas students versus UK students? Um, about 50-50. <laughs> it, it is really very much 50-50. And we've got a really good mixture of international students as well. So um, 
got students from China, Hong Kong, we've got from Russia, we've got lots from Europe, uh, a few from South America, lots and lots of different nationalities. And we also take from students all around the UK as well. So not just from the local Oxford area. There are a lot of Oxford students, obviously, because we're in Oxford. Um, but we've got a really good mix of students from, as Alistair has been saying, lots of different backgrounds. Brilliant, thank you. Our next question is, what are the class sizes in the sixth form? Class sizes, I'll say, never more than 11. Never more than 11. We think small classes are fabulous because it means that you do hear individual voices, you can have lots of discussion, people can't fall asleep at the back of the class, you meet new friends, there's a kind of informality about it at the same time as growing in confidence through hearing your own voice and articulating your own ideas. So we are great believers in small classes. Never more than 11, often less than that. Excellent, thank you, Alistair. Uh, the next question is, what are the teaching methods in the sixth form? Teaching methods, that's interesting. Well, as we've, you've heard right the way through, it's, it's, it's about focusing on the individual and making sure that we provide an environment where there's pace to the lessons, where students are engaged with their learning, they're reflective, they're active in what they're doing. Uh, it's the fundamentals, making sure there's, there's good assessment for learning so they know where they are, they know what they've got to do, and they own their own learning in terms of setting targets and thinking about how they best achieve things. So all the best teaching practices supported by uh, um, effective planning and lots of support. But let, let's maybe ask the students, they, they've answered some of that, but is there anything more you want to say about students about lessons? or teaching or learning generally, or not? That's, that's worrying Gil. <laughs> I would say that they're very interactive. Um, you're never just sort of sat there passively. They're always asking questions. You're always wanting to answer. Um, yeah, just lots of discussions and active learning. Well, what's the layout of a kind of typical classroom? What does that feel like? Um, so a lot of the times we have the horseshoe um, and that's actually as small as it sounds that actually makes a really big difference because you can see both obviously the board and your teacher and also other students so that's really good if you're having a debate or um, just general discussions. Yeah, so, so kind of again with the, the, those sorts of numbers as well you can get people talking and, and working pairs and so on and so on. Anybody else? Chris, Emma, Pedro, is anything you want to say? I would just say there's uh, there's not much hiding. You can't <laughs> really hide too much in these small classes and the horse shape. Your yeah. teacher can see everything and all you're doing, especially with all the one notes and all the modern technology, that uh, there really isn't much getting away from the teacher. And although most of all the lessons are good fun, you don't really turn up and hopefully you're choosing the A-levels you like, so you don't ever going to a lesson where you're turning up and going oh here we go another lesson of economics another lesson of psychology you're actually turning up and you enjoy the process yeah and as we, as we said earlier i mean what, what our aim is to, to, to choose the things that they're enthusiastic about they want to study and they, they learn the skills and how to think uh, and that's what's important for the next stage not not just kind of kind of cram cram lots of knowledge in is how to do things and give you the skills okay thank you Excellent, thank you all. And um, we have a question here about the Tennis Academy, and that is, can you tell me how many students you take for the Tennis Academy, and a little bit about more about it in general? Okay, I think I should probably take that one. Um, so, how many we take? Um, well, it depends on the sort of the level of the candidates that are applying, but um, somewhere in the region of about eight students would be what we would look for. Mixture girls and boys, so it's completely girls and boys teams. Um, the programme itself is, is, is a very uh, bespoke programme, so it's geared around the students' timetables, so they have one-to-one -one lessons during their free periods. Uh, they're an affiliated member of a local club um, who also run sessions, and they have group sessions as well. In addition to that, there's a mentor programme, strength and conditioning programme, sports psychology, nutrition workshops, so it's a fully rounded programme to suit that student's uh, level and to help them get to, to the next stage whilst obviously supporting them in their, in their academic studies. It, it's roughly about nine to ten hours of coaching uh, each week. 
Um, so yeah, but it obviously you need to be a certain level to be able, there is an entry level to get in there. You have to be a certain um, level of player. For those that aren't at that level of player, we offer um, tennis as part of our normal activities and we have great links obviously with, with tennis clubs in the local area. So if you're not a tennis academy player, but you're interested in tennis, there's definitely something for you here at any level. And one of our tennis players has just become county champion. Indeed he has. Thanks to Johnny's speaking. Yeah, I don't ever think he knows. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all. And it's worth mentioning as well, there's a dedicated page on our website about the Tennis Academy, which you can also find more information there too. Um, and next question today is, how long is the school day from start to finish? And is there a Saturday school? Um, I can take that one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the school day does, there's, as we said, there's no formal choose to groups. There's no formal registration period in the morning. Students can come in and go straight to their first lesson, which starts at 8.35. Uh, and lessons take place throughout the school day and finish at 20 past four. But there are opportunities for students to stay in the building longer should they wish to. There aren't any formal academic lessons or anything specifically on a Saturday. Those who are in the boarding will obviously benefit from the boarding programme and some of the activities that the boards will put on, but there are no specific obligations for pupils over the courses of the weekend or on the Saturday. Can I just say, I mean, I mean one of the things apart from the lessons is that most subject departments will run lots of workshops and clinics and support sessions that students can drop into. So often after 4.20, um, there may well be things running that if students want to get extra support. Did, again, students, did you, did you use any of those? Have you used any of those kind of drop-in sessions and things? It's going to go quiet again, isn't it? <laughs> um, I've used them for biology the most because that's kind of the one that's been advertised to me, to, to me the most. Um, but yeah, I think they're really helpful because it, that you literally go in and you ask a specific question outside of lesson, lesson time or like to just revise anything like particularly when we had mocks at the end of last year that was really helpful for me so they are very useful and, and generally how kind of how accessible if you've got if you've got a question or you want to you want to ask about something how, how accessible are, are teachers if you want to get some support somebody chris i'm really easy honestly um it's up to you you can go contact your teacher on teams you can just go to their office you can ask them the lesson if you don't want to ask them the lesson there's the boosters um you can just literally catch them around walking around the site it really is anytime you feel comfortable any way you want to it's just up to you yeah and again that's all part of that relationship and getting to a stage where we can just talk openly about work and uh, whether that's through an email or a chat or, or a uh, over a cup of coffee it's, it's, it's a lot of accessibility i hope thanks um, if our students like to keep their cameras and microphones on, we've actually got another question directly for you guys here. And that is, what is the interaction like between day pupils and boarders? So do any of you have any thoughts on that one? Well, uh, I'll take that one. Last year I was a boarder and most of my friends in school are day students. Uh, I got to know them like at the beginning of the year and yeah, been good friends with them since then. Thank you, Pedro. Are there anything else the others would like to add at all? Um, I'd say yeah. being a oh, sorry, we, sorry, Eloise, you go. Um, some people, um, a lot of schools have a massive divide, I think, bef between boarders and those students, but that really isn't the case at Dover Brooks. I have a pretty equal group of friends from who are day and boarding, um, and. That definitely helps with DOS groups um, and Dover Brooks definitely likes to just mix everyone together and that helps with classes as well. You know, you have both borders and day. Um, yeah, so th there's definitely not much a divide of a divide at all. Chris, you were going to say something? Yeah, I definitely agree with what Eloise was saying. And even through COVID where we were all trying to stay apart and not really come into contact with different groups and different households and bubbles but still we all manage to like as Louise is saying mix and integrate and it's really nice that even through that situation we still got to know loads of different people Thanks, excellent 
Thank you all. Um, we've had a lot of great questions through this evening, so thank you to everyone who submitted those. And um, we're coming towards the end of today's session, so we'll try and cover another couple of questions now before we draw to a close. So the next question that we have is around academic scholarships, and that is which subjects are included in the academic scholarship? Oh, um, there's a whole host of subjects in the academic scholarship. Um, if you're interested, drop me a line and I'll send you the booklet. Um, it incorporates things like all three sciences, French, Spanish, English, history, geography, uh, computer science, um, I'm trying to think of them all now, uh, Latin, if you're that way inclined. Um, yeah, lots of different subjects are incorporated in it. Uh, we don't do all of them, but we do a lot of the maths as well. Um, obviously, you can be assessed in what we say for academic scholarship, if you're keen, uh, you can be assessed in two of your subject choices. And then we also assess you in a general paper as well, just to test your general academic aptitude. But like I said, if you're interested, drop me a line and I can tell you much more about it. Brilliant. Thank you, Anthony. Um, we have another question here about boarding, and that is, is flexi boarding an option at Doverbrooks? Uh, I'll take that. Um, we've got the option of full boarding or weekly boarding. Um, and you can swap some students, start off weekly and change to full work boarding or vice versa. We can be quite flexible. And those boarders who want to stay at the weekends, we have an option where, where we can accommodate them at weekends ad hocly if, if they need to. Excellent. Thank you, Felisa. And our final question for this evening is what opportunities are there for students to put on their own performances? Hello, when you at an audition today? I was. Um, we have the school whole school musical this year, and that will be in February. And I had auditions today. So that's very exciting as it was cancelled last year due to COVID. Um, and if you do drama A level, um, I do drama A level, you have um, as part of coursework a devised performance which you create your own sort of 20 minute play with a group um, and you learn so many um, new skills from that and that was really really fun um, and then you also have um, in upper sixth scripted work as well which is also in an exam um, and uh, yeah so there's lots of drama going on obviously Covid has restricted that a bit but we're getting back into the flow of things. Yeah. I was just going to add to that as well. Um, if students want to perform, and not something necessarily that's organised by the school, but we have lots of um, we have lots of concerts and opportunities to perform where individuals can go and do something, not necessarily they've packed in a group, but they've done individually or outside of school that they can perform. I'm, I'm, I've put uh, one of my sports scholars together with a music scholar, and they're doing a, a she's an acrobatic gymnast, and he's a composer, and they're putting a piece of music together, and they're going to perform it to the school. A few years back, we actually had two students who completely uh, direct produced uh, school school performance entirely, ran it themselves, student led. So uh, yeah, we believe in if students want to get involved, take the initiative, take ownership of something, then they absolutely should have the opportunity to, to do that. And and yeah, we will facilitate that. Hello, it might be quite a good way to end the evening by you breaking into song, and then the <laughs> rest of us can join in. I know girls have a very good voice, and Jonathan as well. I think I won't um, hurt everyone's ears with that. Oh. Yeah, I'll take a mess. <laughs> Just a thought. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Um, that's all we have time for this evening. So thank you to our panellists and to our students for their talks and to our audience for your questions. If you would like to get in touch to arrange a visit or if you have any further questions, please do contact our sixth form admissions team and you can contact them at sixthformadmissions at dofbrooks.com. Thank you for joining us and we hope to hear from you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank you.